Good morning, good morning, good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Minette Riordan here. It is a chilly Friday morning here in Loveland, Colorado, where I live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I am Minette. I am in my pajamas and my channel on YouTube is all about art as a tool for introspection, personal growth, and self-discovery. I find that when we make time to access visual imagery of our unconscious, that we learn new things about ourselves. I also believe that personal growth and self-discovery can be fun and entertaining and doesn't always have to be like this big dark night of the soul. And sometimes it needs to be that dark night of the soul in order maybe to shake us out of a particular situation or into some new knowing. But it's a Friday morning and I wanted to do something a little more whimsical, playful, and fun. So I'm still working. Good morning, Judy and Leslie. Welcome, welcome. I'm still working from our set of prompts for January. I did put links to this in some of the earlier videos from this month. And for today, I chose prompt number five, the growth garden, cultivate a garden scene, each flower or plant symbolizing an area of personal growth. So this felt really fun. It is a full moon week. Yesterday was the first full moon of January. And full moon is all about releasing and making room for the new. So it felt like this perfect time for me personally to create a good morning Becky to create a whimsical garden and I wanted something a little more lighthearted and fun for myself this morning and I'm um, still thinking about this topic of the you know value of wandering uh, that I've been reading about in the book Rooted so I wanted to do a little bit of an experiment this morning and I wanted to see if I could make some foam stamps that I can use with watercolor. I love making my own handmade stamps and stencils and um, normally I would use those with acrylic paint but what felt fun this morning was some whimsical watercolor and some, and I'll use this page here for a test page, some whimsical watercolor flowers that then I could zen tangle over the top of, add lines and patterns. So I was just doodling some different shapes that we could use and this um, process and practice is inspired by an old book I'm not even sure is available anymore by the artist Cheryl Moot who I adore. So I'm going to come in here and I'm this is sticky back fun foam and I don't want to make any of these too big and I'm drawing on the sticky back side not the front side but I want to come in and I'm just going to create some simple shapes. So when we get to the watercolor part, I'm going to encourage you to paint along because you can just paint these shapes on your page, which if these don't work with watercolor, that's what we're going to end up doing. I also maybe want a couple of leaf shapes as well, just really simple shapes. And we're going to have some fun creating this very whimsical garden using some bright watercolor, some centangle pattern, and some writing and words as well to represent the different areas of personal growth. And when I was thinking about this that this this morning, you know, it's a topic that interests me. It certainly is the, the topic of the work I do in the world is expressive and therapeutic arts and how we can use art as a tool for self-discovery and growth. This one I think I want it to be a little bit rounder. And that idea of the growing garden always 
appeals to me. So I'm just drawing some sort of random shapes. And if they don't work with watercolor, I'm not too worried because they will all eventually get used with acrylics. Give a little more stem there. And then I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and cut these out. So as I am painting and drawing this garden, I'm also thinking about areas of personal growth that maybe need my attention or maybe things that I can celebrate having made progress in. So one of the areas of personal growth for me, good morning, good morning, good morning, icy Ottawa, I'm sorry, it's icy, it's 32 and a chance of snow here, but it's been a lot worse. Good morning, Yvonne, love the, the sunny mornings. It's gray here today. It is definitely not sunny, but it's going to be sunny and 50, which is wonderful tomorrow. So I'm thinking that, you know, one of the areas I've really been personally working on in my business in my life is fear of growth and having my business get too big and become too much work or the belief that it always has to be hard work. So I love this YouTube channel. It has been the most, one of the most fun things I, I've done along with my mythical makeovers in the last year that have created a lot of visibility, but that are really fun for me. And yet it, uh, it definitely took some, some courage to show up live on video here and wonder, is anyone going to show up? Is anyone going to watch? And if they watch once, are they going to come back again? So those doubts have dissipated quite a bit. And I had to really dig into courage and commitment, right? So I think the other thing I would celebrate personal growth is just my own personal commitment to growing this channel and being consistent. And when I look back over the last year at how much art I made, like there's so much to celebrate for me personally about this part of doing this was just that commitment to my own creative journey and making more time for my own creative practice and having the account of accountability of people to show up for has really helped. Uh, I am currently leading and growing a local chapter of a women's business organization called The Dames that I absolutely love and it's challenging and I don't know a lot of people here to reach out to and there's work and details. And so there again was that, you know, fear and doubt in the beginning of is this the right thing to do? Is this where I want to put my my time and energy? And ultimately, yes, for sure. It has been another thing that I did very consistently last year. And I'm very present to the areas of my life that still need my attention, health and fitness. I say I want more time for writing, but I'm not prioritizing that. In fact, I was journaling about that this morning before the call. It's like, okay, am I resisting writing? Like I like to write, I don't normally resist writing. Um, but what's going on and what I realized was two things. One, I'm not making it a priority. Um, I usually save these little abstract shapes because they can also make little fun stencils and I have a little bucket of them that I save to play with. If they're too small, I don't save them. And I'm not in resistance. I'm excited about it but I'm not committed to it. It doesn't feel fun in the same way that showing up to the painty page or the art page or here on YouTube feels fun. So my sort of 
you know, um, introspection around this is that what needs to happen here is that I need to carve out the time and commit the time on my calendar like I've done the other things that are super important. Okay, so if you've never made foam stencils and stamps before, they are so much fun to make. So this is a very thin, looks like maybe an eighth of an inch fun foam. You can get this anywhere at Walmart, Michaels, Joann's probably, um, or online. You can sometimes buy individual sheets like this or they come in packs as well. And then we're going to adhere that sticky back fun foam to this thicker piece of fun foam to actually create our stamp here. And I'm going to make these little individual stamps so that I can maneuver them around a little bit, but I'm going to get them all stuck on here. And at some point last year, I know I have showed this before on the channel, but what I love about creating my own stamps and stencils is that it makes my art original and unique. It's all mine. I'm not copying someone else, like no one else is going to cut a circle the same way, right? Like there's, you know, it's this idea that the more I put energy into making my work original, the more I find my own style, the better I feel about all of it. And I could also do this exact same process with an old manila file folder or an old piece of uh, you know recycled or used cardstock and rather than stamps I could cut these shapes and make stencils as well so there's no right or wrong way to do this but the idea here is to get some of these original shapes down and again this idea is inspired by a wonderful old book by Cheryl Moot. And I was looking at the book again this morning. It sort of just popped into my head. I also really loved that she had a couple of her designs. So I definitely want an oval shaped flower. But then I loved how she had some that had holes in them that were sort of donut shaped. So I'm going to do a couple more here and then we're going to play around and see if these are going to work with watercolor or not. The other thing that I really love to do with these foam stencils is to draw patterns into them. So for example, in this leaf one and again I don't know if this will work with watercolor because it's too wet but you can take a ballpoint pen or you can take one of those little um, metal tools with the balls on the end and I can just come in and put some lines in here and I'm pressing pretty hard and when you do this with acrylic paints, you'll actually see those lines and you can create some really wonderful patterns and marks. I love to take some of this fun foam and add like some big chunky Zentangle patterns to them. So we'll do that on a couple of these as well. And we're gonna see what happens, but we're gonna get all these different shapes made and then have some fun playing with paint this morning and this may may end up being a two-part video we'll see if I get past the the playing part and get the watercolor down and then in another part come back to add the line drawing and patterns once the the watercolor is nice and dry 
So how is everyone else on this Friday morning? What are you working on? What are you thinking about this morning? When you think about personal growth, what can you celebrate about this past year? Remember our theme this month is renew, reflect, or ref yeah, renew, reflect, refresh. And we always have to start with that reflect. Like, where have I been? How have I grown in the past year? And what areas of my life would I benefit from giving some attention to? And if I connect this back to the work that we did yesterday around purpose and creating our heart's desire map of aligned values and how we choose to live our life. There's a lot in there for me that is already happening and a lot that's aspirational that is, are areas that I want to work on. So I've, I think I've mentioned um, on here about this beautiful book that I'm reading called Rooted. And this morning, the chapter was all about solitude. And the author loves going on solo hikes in backpacking in the wilderness. And oops, I forgot to cut the circle out here. Um, and she talked about the night fears that come when she's out there alone and that that never goes away. Oh, that sounds amazing. Leslie, are you going to read to chat about books you've been reading? Are you going on your own? Is Tom going with you? Because I know you both are avid readers. That sounds super fun. Brad and I went to the Fort Collins Friends of the Library sale last weekend, and I got a bunch of kids' books for a dollar each that I'm going to uh, be able to use for collage. I'm super excited to spend some time cutting some of those up. But in this chapter on solitude, she talks about a study that was done in the early 2000s by some neuroscientists studying the brain. And they said that what happens in solitude, and this is absence of input, right? So this is no no phone, no book, right? You know, no, nothing to distract your mind, but just to be in solitude is when certain areas of our brain get activated, some bigger scissors here, get activated that don't get activated at other times, specifically the ones related to memory, to feelings and emotions, and that when we allow our minds to go quiet is when we really have the opportunity to meet ourselves, to meet the, the true depths of ourself. And it was such a good reminder. And it's, I've been thinking about this, you know, book writing conundrum. And I've been thinking about uh, a writer's retreat. And so that I have the the time and the opportunity to sit in solitude without the distractions of television and phone and computers and cats and how much I would benefit from some solitude with my thoughts and with my thinking because it's where all of that creative magic really happens. Okay, we're getting there. I've got a lovely, lovely set of fun abstract flowered shapes grown in creating connection, been a bit stagnant in moving your body. Four weeks of being back in the pool feels worth celebrating. Heck yeah, Carol, 100%. That is definitely worth celebrating. The pool sounds lovely. I keep, there is a, a pool at our gym and, um, 
I keep thinking about getting into the pool that that would feel feel really wonderful. Okay, so now I have all of these stamps. The next thing is to figure out what I'm going to use them with. And actually, um, I saw a really fun activity online, a kids activity where someone was using just plain old Crayola markers to stamp and the Crayola markers would be a fun layer to put underneath our drawing as well. So I'm going to start with watercolor. If the watercolor doesn't work, maybe I'm going to go grab some markers. <clears throat> Sip of water there. Okay, so let's get in here and make a mess. So I've just got my big pan of watercolors, the same one I was using the other day. And I should have sprayed them all sooner. But that's all right. So I'm thinking this puddle is going to be nice because I can simply dip the stamp right into the puddle. So I might want to figure out something else that I could make some puddles on. I could actually probably do it on this nice butcher paper that I'm working on. So let's get this sort of slurry of purple going. Maybe I'm going to brighten that up a little bit. Some of whatever this violet is, it's now getting all purple. And I'll clean it up later. I bought this one tube of Daniel Smith paint that came out so plasticky the the color separated. I've only had that happen once or twice. Judy, I've spent the past five years creating art for others in group settings. This intent this year is self-discovery for your own art interest. I love it. That's so fun, Car Judy. And Carol, Fun Foam Stamps. Yay, awesome. Yeah, do go buy some Fun Foam. It is a ton of fun. Okay, so I am just going to mush this around on here and see if we can get enough color on here to use to make me happy. I don't think so. Every time you put in a long explanation in the chat, it doesn't come through. Oh yeah, I think it doesn't, um, it doesn't love uh, too many words. I've had that happen before as well. Leslie, that, you know, if it doesn't go through, it's because they're, um, it's too long. So it's kind of annoying. All right, so what if instead of dipping, you can see how much that sort of pooling on the surface there. So everything is an experiment. This was something I want to try. I love that you guys go spend your time together in a B&B. &B. So this is an experiment and an attempt at trying something new. Okay, that worked a lot better. And it's got some interesting little texture. I love that. You read your books in your room or go to the dining room, family room. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. So this is going to dry nicely. I don't love this little dot at the top. And of course, I can always just come in and paint these shapes by hand. And I decided I wanted to try something a little different and more fun. All right, Leslie, that sounds like my kind of weekend getaway. I love, love, love it. So tomorrow, my friend Karen and I are going to go explore a couple of art resale shops. And I'm super excited to go check them out. So this one is the one that I drew the lines on. And you can see how the paint is settling into the lines. And I'm also not working on watercolor papers. So that created almost like a philodendron pattern. Look where the paint pooled differently. So I actually really, really love that one. 
and let's see if we get a little different green so painting the paint onto the stamp rather than dipping it gave me a richer color gave me some interesting sort of smooshing and shapes here all right so it works okay right it doesn't work necessarily spectacularly so bear with me I'm gonna walk a few feet over here I know the leaf came out spectacular and I'm gonna go grab my Crayola markers and do a little testing with the markers and see if I like the the result better All right, I'd forgotten I'd seen this until I started making the, the, the foam stamps. So I am gonna grab a handy dandy baby wipe here. And I've tried different brands of baby wipes. And I always come back to Pampers because they work better. They don't seem to dry out get a little more paint so even more interesting with that second print I can really now I got the blank spaces right where I drew the lines but I'm going to clean the the paint off of these and I'll be curious to see if I add another color on here is it going to reactivate the watercolor I normally with acrylic I don't care about dirty stamps the you know the paint the paint dries and it's all fine but watercolor is different because every time you add water to it it reactivates okay so let's try somebody was doing a kids Valentine's Day project with uh, I don't know if it was fun foam or styrofoam. It might have been styrofoam. And hearts for Valentine's Day, these pretty abstract hearts. So what happens if we come in with some Crayola marker? So we get a very pale version here, which is interesting because the that pale is, again, it's nice to draw over the top of, but I don't like it as much as I did the watercolor, but what happens if I activate that marker with a little water? Great color, great coverage, um, acted more like watercolor, and it was really easy to get on there. So that actually worked really nicely. Clean that off a little bit better. So I kind of like both. They're interesting. They do different things. Again, I'm working on inexpensive sketchbook paper, not a nice watercolor paper. I might get a, a different impact or effect, but on in these morning series, I try every month to work in a journal. So I think I'm going to keep going with these Crayola markers and see what kind of fun I can have because it's different. And we don't always need to have fancy, expensive materials to make beautiful and meaningful art. Sometimes the most impactful pages that I create in my personal journaling practice are done with a magazine and a glue stick, or they're done with a, oh, there's a pretty painty page on the other side, um, or they're done with Crayola markers. Okay, so I want to be a little thoughtful and I'm gonna get my garden down on here. And so I'm gonna start with just some random flower shapes and then I'll start filling it in. And I think maybe I wanna think about my palette a little bit. I did like that orangey yellow. I'm not feeling red today and it's cold and gray here there's not a lot of color you know things aren't 
blooming right now so I think I'm longing I've been having lots of fresh flowers in the house because I've been longing for color so maybe a little pop of orange is that the same that's the same yellow maybe a little lighter orange so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna test these colors on that other page over there and then I'll come in also with a few shades of green but let's just swatch these out a little bit so that's a really blue green don't love that one I tend to like a little yeah that's better a little more olivey green there's a nice yellow green and those look just about the same so I don't need both of those <coughs> excuse me Not the same one I have a couple of sets of markers here from different workshops and projects all right let's see we got a nice big chunky orange one there this one's probably similar, slightly lighter, but I'm going to go with that darker one. <coughs> so I'm just planning a little bit, and the uh, tips of the markers don't always represent the color that's inside. I was expecting this to be burgundy, right? And not that bright pink, but it's lovely. Still trying to get past just the last of this cough. That one's very pale, so I'm curious. These are probably going to reactivate a little bit. Let's try it on this. Interesting, it doesn't want to go on the fun foam when the foam is a little bit wet, but maybe that means we're going to get something a little more textured. But I'm thinking that pink is too light for this process. So I'll put that one back. So isn't that fascinating? So these two colors ended up being almost the same, right? This is why swatching before you start coloring is really useful. All right, do we have one other? Now, who would have said that would have been brown? How crazy is that? That is not a brown cap. Let's try. That's not super pink. It's kind of corally, but that's a, a pretty color. And these nice big chunky ones are going to go on there better. Yeah, that's better. And I even love the kind of sketchiness of that. I, I can see that leading to some mark making and line drawing over the top of that. So that's a good one. That's a nice lavender. And this is our same yellow. Do we want two? Whew, no neon. That's too yellow. Surely there's one more yellow. Good. There's a less orangey yellow. Okay, so now I have my palette of colors to create my whimsical garden of personal growth. I thought it was going to be a watercolor garden. I could do it with the watercolors, but I'm, and I'll go back and correct the description of the video. It said it was going to be watercolors and um, change it up to be instead this uh, Crayola markers, but we're going to use them kind of like watercolor. All right, so I'm really, really loading this up with lots of color. And we're going to start building our garden just kind of randomly on the page here. Oh, that's beautiful. And there's a little extra ink at the top that is showing on there. Okay, I'm on to something here that feels fun to me and I could see me doing a few pages of these for sure. Definitely loving the big fat chunky markers. 
Let's get some of the orange going on here. Interesting, that marker wasn't quite as juicy. So do I think I can get it right back in the, more or less in the same place? We'll see, probably not. Well, close enough. Okay, that's better. And maybe we'll make this one orange. So what I'm noticing is it definitely makes a difference with how juicy the marker is. And the fat markers go on with less streakiness than the thin markers. All right, we're going to leave some of those a little sketchy like that and see what happens. And then we're going to maybe treat this a little bit like watercolor. I love the color changes and activates differently when I add the, the water to the marker. So let's see what happens. So then we get this fun blobby shape. This is more of that watercolor-y feeling. So that's kind of fun, add a little more color there. So just something a little bit different. And I will clean all of these later. This is one of my favorite things to do in the studio, like Judy was saying about experimenting and trying different things. Well, this is my version of experimenting is to test and try new techniques and to have an idea and think I'm going one direction and then go in a different direction that works better. But I wouldn't know that unless I was willing to experiment and try, which is such a good sort of metaphor for personal growth, right? Is we have to be willing to try new things. So it's fascinating. This looks like a dandelion with all the little marks around the edges there. And why did I go to the effort to make the, the stamps in the first place? Because I could have easily gone in with my watercolor and simply painted the the petals but there's something about sort of the I don't know lusciousness of taking my time to create the stamps and it creates a different look and effect it also is a thinner layer of color than if I put watercolor directly on there. I have a little bit more control over where the color is going so I get a neater shape and image without the watercolor kind of just flowing everywhere. Maybe we'll kind of tuck some of these in a little bit closer. I actually really like the ones where you can see the streaks of the marker on them. They don't need too much water. I might even pull a little bit of that water off. Maybe we'll come layer this one over here and we'll do some flowers are staggered in a garden, right? They aren't always just, can't see all of them. If you look at a field of wildflowers, they're all kind of blooming and blended together at first glance. You're not seeing all of the individual flowers. All right, I want one more of these. Let's try down here, really putting some pressure on that. We'll get a nice clean stamp as well. So the garden is coming together. I'm having a lot of playful fun. I think that was the you know, other message that I wanted for myself this morning was that reminder that personal growth can be playful and fun. And when I make time to play and connect to myself, often in solitude down here in my studio, then I'm enjoying the process, right? I'm enjoying the process. Get some of these little... Okay, that one doesn't feel very juicy as it's going on there. Let's see, here's a big fat yellow one. And if you don't have just these 
simple tools in your stash. You know, we often get inspired and excited by expensive, fancy supplies. I want to encourage you to, you know, watch for sales at Walmart or Target when they have Crayola products, sometimes Michaels does, they often have them on sale or try knockoff brands. They don't have to be the, the Crayola brand, but have some really fun, simple, inexpensive tools. What I find is often when people spend a lot of money on tools, then they're afraid to use them or supplies, they're afraid to use them and they end up just sitting in a box somewhere and so when we have less precious supplies I think that we are less attached and um, more likely to actually have some fun using them and exploring and playing and trying. Interesting that one looks so orange going on but I know that it's going to come off as yellow. Put that one maybe way up there. Again, I love that stripey effect that's just absolutely beautiful. And then I'm going to get just a little bit of water on there. Just try to manage that flow of water a little bit. So it's interesting color choices for me. It's like missing maybe some of the, the reds and the brighter, bolder colors. All right, so I'm looking kind of from a, a composition perspective. What do I want to add? What's missing? So I'm feeling like, and some of this is going to get filled in with leaves and drawing. Yes, so fun. Good morning, Blanca. Great to see you having fun making these stamps and um, we're coloring them Blanca this morning with Crayola markers. I tried watercolor as well, but I ended up loving the markers. Yeah, um, uh, building a bigger flower out of the shapes. Absolutely. Yes, you could totally. Actually, it would be really fun. You said that, Yvonne. Um, I could take all of these uh, stamps and create a gorgeous botanical mandala design with them, right? That would be really fun as well. All right, so I feel like maybe one more of these big lavender circles on here. And then I'm going to add some leaves and then I'm going to get to drawing on them. What I also like about the, the marker some of them are a little wet, but it's drying faster than the, the watercolor would. So I'll have to try that next, um, Yvonne. All right, let's see if we can get another one of these sort of fun dandelion shapes going down. And these layered okay too, which is nice. They didn't... Uh, so there we got some orange mixed in. We got a little bit of brown on there. It's all good. Uh, they layered interestingly, right? There's some interesting opacity there. Now I'm looking at it and it's feeling like it's too much going across the page and it needs something up at the, the top up here. So I really love this shape with the hole in it. And let's put one more of this. We'll kind of let these mix together and see what happens. And then we're going to add some leaves and then some patterns. And I know others probably have a, a busy day. I will probably linger a little longer to do some of that drawing this morning. And I'm curious, you know, I may have done all of this work and realize that the it is looking like a happy garden. I know it's so playful and fun and realize we'll see if my pens will draw over the top of the marker. And I'm really loving the, the combination of the ones with the, the water on them as well as the ones with the sort of 
sketchy marks as well. All right, let's get some greens on here. And since I know I'm going to be able to see some of those drawn lines, I'm going to be a little intentional maybe with the strokes of some of those and see what happens. I'm going to bring this all the way down to the bottom of the page. Look, 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 look. I love it, love it, love it. So fun. There's always that satisfaction when you try something new and it actually works. All right, I definitely am going to want a few of these stems on here. So let's try one with some water. It needs a B on top. Awesome. I'll have to make a, a fun foam B stamp. And also, I think a cute little birdie would be really fun down here at the bottom to create a little bird shape. And in this one, I did get some really fun bleed, almost as if they're watercolors. So there must have been a little extra water in there. All right, so we're going to do one right over the top of all of this. So that one's a lot looser in style. Very fun, and they are kind of bleeding together. Maybe we'll get one going off the page over there. And one more. I love things in odd numbers, right? So I'm going to put five of these on here, and then I'm going to switch up my green and my leaf shape, although I really love this green. And let's do one more down here. Groovy, and I love the, the difference between all of these as well. So let's see, let's get some of this extra bright going. And I'm going to do that same thing where I want to do some where I'm letting the lines of the marker show and probably some with just a little bit of water on there. Okay, so let's imagine that leaf is connected to that flower. Love the one with the lines on it. I think that one definitely is a favorite and a keeper. Let's get one of these going up here as well. And then let's try one with just a tiny little bit of water. My husband's upstairs making bacon and eggs for breakfast for himself and it smells so good. All right, let's maybe put one over here. So we get a completely different look with the, the water on it. Get a little of these smaller leaves in here. What color was this one? No, I don't, that's the wrong. I'm trying to find, I think that's that same. Yep, same green. It's trying to find one more. Okay, that one's interesting. That's a little blue-green, so let's try. Again, I'm going to play with the marker on there. And very nice. And I love starting to layer them all together. 
yeah, this feels very fun and playful. It feels like I could create definitely a whole series of these. So they officially announced the start date of this year's 100 day project. And and the official start date is going to be February 18th. And I have a, a few different ideas. Botanicals was one, which is fun, but I realized that I wanted something that is going to sort of lead me on, um, like feel more productive for some of the business things I'm working on. So I'm and in specifically regarding to writing my book. So I'm thinking about 100 days of cartoons or 100 days of sketch noting. But I'm like 100 days of fun phone stamps would also be really groovy. Good morning, Marianne. All right. And a couple more of these little leaves in here. Maybe we're going to layer one over there and then maybe one in here. And I'm going to stop there with the ink. I'm going to hit this with my dryer just to make sure that it's dry. And then I'm going to come in and start really bringing the flowers to life with some marks, but before I do that, I'll make a bee later because I'd have to go look up how to draw a really simple bee. But I think you're right that maybe a little bee on the edge of this flower up here, but I'm still thinking it would be cute. I have this little space to maybe have a little birdie in the front here and maybe even a bluebird to have something a little bit different. So I'm going to come back over here to my fun foam and I'm going to think about bird shapes here for a minute. They're pretty simple and I know Cheryl in her book had some really fun sample shapes. And I'm using just a ballpoint pen for this. And I'm thinking kind of a trying to be mindful of the fun, fun foam and use as much at the top. Well, that's good to know, Marianne. I did not know there was a, a Zentangle bee. I don't want a huge birdie. But maybe just a nice fat chunky little birdie with a little beak. Just a really simple shape and then I can draw in wings and tail feathers and patterns. I'm going to just cut out that so if you're just joining us we're working with sticky back fun foam and Crayola markers today. Even though I thought this was going to be all about the watercolor, I ended up really loving. Actually, let's see, I love making these uh, double-sided and then you don't need as much as the, the thick foam. Butterflies are always awesome, Becky. I can never have enough butterflies. And what garden wouldn't have both butterflies and bees. Okay, so this is interesting. I really wanted the bird going this way, so I should have drawn it the opposite direction, right? So this one could fit over here. No, I did do that right. Yeah, so when I stamp it, it's going to be right. Okay, so let's try, let's see. That's a lovely blue. And one of the things I always get excited for in the spring is when our beautiful mountain bluebirds come back. They're beautiful and they're so fun to watch. 
they actually are very blue on top and then they have this gorgeous sort of rusty red breast very much like a robin does all right so let's get a little birdie in here very cute now we have a little bird and maybe we'll get a little bijou snail down here. So we could definitely go to town on this. I love all of the suggestions of critters to add because you know I love me some fun, playful critters. So I'm gonna hit this just briefly with the dryer, make sure all that marker is dry. And again, this is about having fun with shapes, right? And not um, not having to fun with shapes and also not having to have really expensive supplies. So this is inexpensive sketch paper, Crayola markers, sticky back fun foam, which is maybe a dollar a sheet, right? And um, that's it, right? And then a black pen, a black fine tip pen of some point. In fact, I'm thinking I want my Uniball Air Micro. Let me see if I can find that because it's going to flow better over the top of the Crayola. So I can come back over here to my sample page. Yes, play time and experiment time. Right, so there's that Uniball Air Micro. I always um, am very mindful of not abusing my microns. And actually, I love the, the bolder line of the, the Uniball. Then um, I do the, this is going to show a lot better, this little bit thicker tip. Here's a Micron PN, which gives me that thicker but this one's a little older not as flowy so this is one of my most uh, favorite drawing pens I learned about this pen years ago from Wendy Solganic from uh, Willa Wanders and it's the Uniball it's probably hard to see it's glary it's the Uniball Air Micro it's a lovely pen and I'm looking at the the sticky back fun foam here and I can use this if I wanted to have another bird, right, facing the opposite direction. I can use my fun foam here as a stencil to draw another bird. And I'm so excited about all the fun things I can do with this lovely stack of stencils. But I want to come in and just start getting... some lines and marks down, giving my flowers some definition. I want my flowers to be grounded, right? So they need to have stems on them. And the lines and the marks, they don't have to be fancy. I love Zentangle so I can see myself really getting geeky with some Zentangle patterns in these. But first I want to play. This is first effort, right? So this is probably not the only one of these that I would do. So for this one, I'm thinking we're going to redefine that leaf shape, letting that green just sort of float in the background. And that paper is still a little damp where I use the, the water. I can feel it tearing just the, the pen is reacting differently over that softer 
and maybe we're going to have just some nice stamen in the center of our design here. And just have some fun. These are whimsical flowers. They're not intended to be realistic. They're flower inspired, right? So having some playful fun. This one kind of sort of reminds me a little bit of a tulip. But you can see how the page starts to change as soon as we add these black lines start to see more of the definition on the page. And just looking for some other inspiration. So one of my favorite Zentangle patterns is a very simple classic one called Bales. So what if we came in and did Bales and I drew my grid on a diagonal here. And this is where, as soon as I start doing the line work, my whole body relaxes and slows down. I have to focus on the lines. One of the many, many benefits of a mindful drawing practice like Zentangle is that invitation to slow down to slow our hand down, to slow our thoughts down, to breathe a little bit more deeply. And there's no rhyme or rhythm here. The Bluebird reminded you of your player fags projects because you stenciled a deep blue onto blue jeans. And I love that blue on blue look, just sharing my joy. Oh, I love that, Blanca. I loved that project. That was um, one that I personally enjoyed. So let's do maybe a little... leafy bit as if there's some leaf holding here at the bottom of the flower. So we have a, a couple of stems starting to come in really close together here, which really starts to give it that garden feel. And I can also draw leaves in. I can add more color, but I don't think that it needs more color. And I'm going to let this leaf be in the front. I love the, the layers of the, the color of the pink peeking through. And then I'm going to allow the, just outline the lines and marks that are already there. I don't need to go over them or recreate them. And I really want this leaf to also be attached to something, right? That it feels like it's just kind of floating out there. So it might, like a balloon, need to get its own stem down here as well. So it just feels a little bit more grounded. How are we doing for time? We're at 8.04. So this might be one that um, 
I finish up a little bit later on. Because there's probably another mm, half an hour at least of uh, mark making and tangling to add here. And I never like for these videos to get too crazy long. Again, whimsical mark making. There's no intention here to make these look like anything, just the playful flower like. And I'm I'm gonna leave this one open. I don't feel like it needs a, a whole lot happening on it there. This particular shape is fun to draw on. Maybe we can give it some scallops and again we're just gonna like use the lines that are already there from the markers and just give it a little dimension. Even just the mindful outlining of the shapes takes that focus, that slowing down, that catching your breath. When you look up close at plants and flowers, no two have the same leaf shape. Yeah, the more classic Zentangle pattern there is definitely super fun. I think maybe we'll add a little sort of reverse crescent moon here. Zhuzh it up just a little bit more. Again, really loving this, how these leaves turned out. So I'm going to leave them be and just give them a stem and let the inside stay really open. So same down here. And just working my way all the way across. And this one we're going to fill with some tipple like it's full of little bits of pollen and seed pods. One of the Z-Tangle patterns I love is called Wells. And it makes a pretty little swirly pattern. 
This is kind of my shortcut cheater way to do it. You're supposed to draw the circle in the center first. And I know I'm probably not zoomed in enough for you guys to zoom in a little bit more. So it's a simple pattern, a circle in the center, and then working your way all the way around the square, just wrapping those lines creates this pattern that I love to draw, but I also think looks very beautiful. Sort of mushing it into some of these funky little spaces in here. So again, that's wells. You can always look up the step outs. We have little half circles in some of these spaces. And I can feel myself wanting to sit here. Thanks, Blanca, you too. Um, hi, Kay. Yes, a beautiful, cheery way to start the day for sure. I can feel myself wanting to sit here and finish it, but what's going to happen is that I'm going to end up rushing because I have some other things that I do need to get to this morning. So I am going to pause here and then I will get to have some playful fun later in the day. Continuing to add patterns to this, I might come back this afternoon or over the, the weekend and I will record the part two of this video so that you can see how I finish it up. But I want to, because this is the part that I enjoy so much, I want to be able to really take my time here and um, enjoy the bark baking because it's my favorite part. But what a fun experiment that we had today. You guys are so welcome. Thank you for being here. A fun experiment we had making these foam stamps and experimenting with both watercolor and markers to design our own unique whimsical garden that represents all the ways that I personally am growing. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I will be back live for sure Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. It is a very cheerful visual for sure. Thanks everybody. So appreciate you joining me live. Thank you so much for those that catch the replay. I am incredibly grateful and cherish each of you. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.